Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to Love, Awaken, and Prosper. I am your host, Sergio Starr, and my special guest today is Gilbert Glenn Brown. Writer, producer, tell me. Um, multi hyphenated, multi hyphenated. Yeah, yes. you know, you know where, where we come from, you kind of got to know how to do it all, pretty much. <laughs> yes, welcome, Gilbert. Thank you, thank you for for being here and for giving me some of your time today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, um, Gilbert and I go back a long time, right? And um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about um, bring Gilbert on is because of his, um, I'm very, I have to say this, Gilbert, um, your perseverance and your focus on your career. Um, it's been something that I really truly respect. And I love watching you. I've always loved, you know, he has an amazing voice a beautiful voice he's pretty good to look at and <laughs> and he's um an amazing um actor um you, would you call yourself a method actor what kind of, what would you, what, what category would you put yourself in <laughs> you know it's funny yeah that's funny you know what uh because I, i've had this conversation a couple of times before and my answer is always the same it's like I let the speak the, the piece or whatever I'm working on speak to me and tell me which way I go. Um, some pieces, some pieces definitely I can uh, approach method, and some pieces sometimes you don't. It doesn't require that kind of work or that kind of uh, attack on it. And so I literally let this piece tell me, let the role tell me exactly where it needs to go. I just kind of surrender to the to the work in that way. Mm, okay. And have you Dream. taken method acting? Like, um, can you tell me some of your training in, and I don't know if you have any, you know, we all know the method, right? Like as an actor, it's like that's yeah. what you take in college. <laughs> but um, any other things that you've done? I mean, I've, I've also, I've, uh, I've, I've graduated from Tisch School of the Arts and I, while I was there, I was studying um, Meisner technique um, and also dabbled in the experimental theater as well. And so I just like, I just like to kind of be a sponge and kind of absorb as much information as much as I can, because that really, as an artist, and you know this, as a fellow artist, it, your experiences inform your work. You know, and it's, uh, you know, and any opportunity that I get to, you know, to, 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 to learn from someone, it could be from a child, it could be from um, someone who is, of course, many, many years my, my senior, I just try to leave myself open so that I can actually learn something because you can. You can, you can. And I love that you said that, that even if it's from a child. Like you could learn from every experience and everyone, you yeah, know, just be open-minded. You know, you, I love that because it's like uh, uh, you're you're not. There's some people who um, are in this career and they're like, I don't need to learn anything else. Like, like they're like you can't really like they're not uh, open to learn. Like I've actually ran into a few people where they you don't you know you know, that saying, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And some uh, people are like that. And uh, it's good yeah. to just be like, I understand what to do. Like I could do this, mm -hmm. you know, I could do something new. So, you know, it's, and it's, it's like, you, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like you have to, you know, know and understand your, your instrument. And also, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily agree. I, I hear what you're saying because I've I met folks like that too, where I feel like they've learned everything they could possibly learn, but how is that even, how is that 
even possible. Um, especially if you call yourself an artist, because mm -hmm. as an artist, you're supposed you are you you have this amazing ability and this amazing responsibility to absorb the world and reflect it back and hopefully open up the mind, the body, the spirit of the person watching you. Something that you do reaches them, reaches their heart, reaches their spirit, reaches their mind, makes them think about something, that makes them feel something that they didn't feel the you know, moments before. Yeah. That as an artist, I feel like that's part of our responsibility. So, and to do that, you have to keep learning. Um, I, and, but, and with that saying that, I also understand being protective of your instrument, not necessarily, you know, there are some, um, you know, there's some, you know, uh, coaches and teachers out there who may not necessarily have the best interest of the artist in mind. It's more, it can sometimes be more so about the bottom line, the, as opposed to the artist, the, the, the actor that's coming, coming through the room, as opposed to a conveyor belt of, mm -hmm. of money coming into the room. And mm -hmm. I feel like I've been lucky and I've been blessed that I've always been attracted to and attracted those kinds of energies and those kind of spirits. And in, in, in regards to my evolution as a man, as an actor, you know? Yeah, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned, I wanna get, get to that because I remember you had a one man um, show called The Evolution of a Man. But I, I want to, I, before we go there, um, I wanted to, um, something that you said, um, in saying that has, I've, I've known director where they have said to me, no, if we say to you, go, wah, 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 we need you to go, wah, 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 like, like, like a, be the parrot. Literally they were saying, oh, we want you to just copy and what exactly what I mean, was the role for a parrot i mean no 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 <laughs> but you know meaning do as i say you do because okay. um there gotcha. so now it's it's yeah. the vision of the director and they want to see you this way but then it's also your intelligence and the way you see this character moving and going have you ever run mm -hmm. into that experience and and if not then um what what's your advice to a young viewer like um if that happens then this is how i will approach it but okay. you know you understand the question i i think i think so i think so um well i guess the first thing i would say is that um for me personally have i come across those directors those kinds of directors yes and I think that my energy also, um, when I'm in the process, sometimes it actually, um, because of where I have, where I tend to go, especially with theater work, um, where I have to go to do the work, um, it all almost like puts a shield around me, if that makes sense, where that energy doesn't even, because I, I will simply say, why am I doing that? Mm -hmm. What, what's the reason for that? Mm -hmm. The work that I did, the script that I read, the story that I thought we were telling was this, which means as an actor, you have to do your homework. You have to understand the, the story you're telling, your part in that story from beginning to end and beyond both of those points. Mm -hmm. So if there was ever a situation where a director was like, I was like, well, why, why, am, I, why am I doing that? Because the actor has to be able to trust the director and the director has to be able to trust the actor. And it's like being in a situation, you know your instrument, again, you know your instrument, instrument and you got to trust your gut. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't seem right, and I'm not even talking about ego, I'm just talking about like spirit. Yes, yes, I, I, right, I understand you that's where that, you come yeah. from. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you something will say, hey, that something's off about this something's off about this so mm -hmm. i need to start asking some questions yeah. so in the situation where a director's like just do what i say and i was like i'm okay so i it, it goes back to so i need to understand why for you for so i need to understand why i'm a part of this project am i here to just be a parrot as you were saying or am i here to bring 
what I bring to this project, what I bring to well, the art that I bring, the my my instrument to this yeah. this orchestra, to this band. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think that um, if I have been in situations where directors wanted something, I would say, oops, sorry about that. I would say that um, most of the time I've been lucky, I've been blessed enough to the percentage of directors who've been like what you described, they've been pretty small. But when I see when I see them, I know them. I see it coming. Boom. Yeah. I, see it coming. <laughs> I was working, I was working on a, I was working on a um a, a film project that I <laughs> I was working on a film project and um, the, the number one on the con on the call sheet, I won't even say who it is, but the number one on the call sheet came in and we were about to do our scene and they were like, hey, how you doing? And they were very, very open, very warm. Very, and I was like, I, I, I like this person. I like this person because they're serious about, because they were like, okay, I want to know who you are, how you doing? Mm -hmm. okay we're here to do this let's play let's figure this out and I was like Ugh, that's what I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about and then the director came up mm -hmm. and then the director <laughs> the director sets the tone oh no the director's supposed to have the vision and I understand in film and television sometimes it's a little different because there's a lot more there's a lot more involved yeah in it but if you, but still, if you're the director, you have a vision. You have a, um, you're supposed to have a vision. You're so you set the tone. And this director, what came across very, this kind of dismissive, mm -hmm. right? And I peeped that really immediately. While mm -hmm. number one, who happens to also be the executive producer of the project was just like, hey, let's do this. I, I know the lines, don't, don't worry about that. We're just gonna go for it and have, I was like, dude, let's rock. Let's have yeah. fun with this. That's fine. And we would do, we did a rehearsal like that. This director was there. We ran through it a few times. We played a little bit, it's like, okay, cool. Then we ran it. So the lines changed in this and then we mm -hmm. locked it in. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to shoot. Um, listen, can you just say what I was like, and I look and I just and I, I was about to say something because I was about to, I was about to say something. It's like, did you not just see what just you we sat here rehearsed three times, once with camera. Number one, one this is what he wanted to do. He's number one on this. He's mm -hmm. the EP on this. Mm -hmm. What are we doing here? You wait until he was gone for you to come and say this to me. Oh, okay. I see who you are. I see who you are. You're not a director. You're a traffic cop, and you're—I don't know—in you might be friends with someone, and that—and there's nothing. I'm not knocking mm -hmm. that. But the thing is, if you have the skills, yes, the know-how, the, the the talent, the wherewithal to actually be in the room, that's what keeps you in the room. That's yes. what keeps you. And I just felt like in that moment, I was just kind of like, I see what I see what this is, and. I have, I, until he shows me differently, the, any respect that I had in, for this person in this moment, I no longer have because I don't, I don't trust this person. And mm. as an, as an, as an actor, as an artist to director, you have to be able to have some form of trust yeah. because there's something, the work that you're doing yeah. is so so uh so sensitive so intricate that if it's off it's off because i mean i've done stuff which i was off and i can see i was off someone else watching it may not feel the same way but i look at it like oh ooh, that was i was off and i know mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. i was off and i know what that's about yeah yeah and, that's... Um, and, and not coming from an ego place but just coming from uh just coming no from this you. is a, your experience and um yeah. this is exactly why i wanted to talk to you because yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are not in, 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 in the mix and, and usually I feel like the way I want to do my show is to awaken people. It's called love, awaken and prosper for a reason. And right. most of the things that the normal, you know, you know, maybe you'll do an interview and it'll be like, what show did you do? Okay, mm -hmm. great. What did you play? All right, great. Let me see a clip. I, you know, I, I want to get a little deeper because I really want people who 
are in the arts, so people who want to be in the arts, or even your fans to see um, like, oh, wow, that's the work that it takes, you know, like the fact that you have to deal with so many different personalities in the industry. And that's another skill that we don't know that we have to acquire, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's like when you see it, it's always funny because, and I know you've gotten this before, when people see the finished product, they see the finished product. They don't know all that it takes to get to the finished product. Oh, oh that was great. I, I want to do that. I can do that. I can. It was like, you make, you pop, you can. And you need to know what it takes to get here because it's not just, it doesn't just magically appear there. There's a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice that goes on before all that, before you see what you see on stage, before you see what you see on film or television. Before you too, even a podcast. Before you hear what you hear in, on the podcast, mm -hmm. you know. And so mm -hmm, good. I want to go deeper into that, um, but do not, because I'm loving where this is going. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk. People don't realize the discipline and the regimen and um, the rituals that it takes to be where you're at. Can you share a little bit of your morning rituals? Can you share a little bit of um, how you take care of your body? Um, I know you're a vegan or vegetarian. I'm not sure. Vegetarian. I'm actually moving back to, have moved back to vegan. Um, I okay, was okay. vegan for a, long, for a long time then vegetarian then going back. Let's talk um, a little bit about that and and the reasons why, I mean, I, I know the reasons, but some people may like, I don't know if I want to, you know, sacrifice meat, but you want to look a certain kind of way, right? Uh, well, you you want to tell me why the, the why <laughs> vegan needs them, why vegetarian? Well, but tell me about your daily okay. rituals. Go ahead. Okay, so daily ritual. Um, I <laughs> if I'm if I'm busy, I get less sleep, but I try to I try to get to sleep at the latest by midnight at the latest unless I have work to do. Um, and I, my, I, my goal is to always be up by 6 a.m. So my goal is to at least get six hours of sleep. Not always successful all the time, but that's the goal because sleep, water, important, so important. It's like, uh, I wake up, first thing I do is I do my meditation, I do my prayers. And I, you, you know, I, I check in to see where I am emotionally spiritually like to just set this set the tone of the day and then after that um i work i do my best to work out like at least four times a week um diet wise um i ain't like you were saying serge i am i am vegetarian and i've been vegetarian vegan since high school and my reasoning for that um <laughs> I tell me the difference yeah. say the um some people may not know what a vegan oh. is or what a vegetarian is can you what's the difference sure a uh, vegetarian is uh, someone who eat you know eats does not eat any kind of flesh no fish that it does not eat no chicken no you know none of that there are some vegetarians however that do have milk that do have eggs Vegans, however, no eggs, no milk, similar to, to vegetarians, but less processed foods, um, more organic foods, natural foods, um, not, um, they also um, no honey, anything that is derived from an, from an animal, a byproduct wow. of a living being. No, you don't have wow. that. Not even honey, my goodness! What's I know on? it's you it's know what it is. The honey, no, 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 no. I know, I know. But what it is is that it's it's like the equivalent of drinking milk. It it's a byproduct of the of the animal. animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the thing about it is like, and but that's something that became that people were starting to think about. Hey, wait a minute, that, that's only been like maybe the last maybe 10 years, 10, 15 years that people put some people have put that together. And said, "Oh, wait a minute! Isn't that a product of a?" And then it started because there that started to become more more prevalent. Okay, so that's yeah. the difference. So vegans just mostly is more organic based foods and nothing processed. 
but vegetarians do eat processed foods and they also have sometimes milk or dairy like cheese and butter yeah, and yeah, have, like, eggs eggs sugar sugar too um vegans there are some vegans however who do eat processed food because there's a lot of um you know it, like when we were growing up i mean there were some places that were you know that had vegan options but right now there are so many so much more op so many more options out in the world um that it's a little ridiculous almost it's like everybody got kentucky fried chicken has a has has a <laughs> plant-based chicken but they, they fry the chicken in the they fry the plant-based chicken in the oil. So it doesn't, I, it, it's weird. It's weird. Kentucky fried chicken has a plant-based, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it I might did be not know in that. California. It might, be in Cal, it might be in California. I think they had it in um, in Georgia for a while, but it was quick, sold out. But, you know, but it's fried. It may be fried in the oil. So that's the okay. other, that's the other thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Vegans are, I think vegans are a little more uh, protective about how foods are prepared. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so then that's your so your morning ritual. You work out, you do your prayer, meditation, and, and, and then you go to the gym. To hmm? I try to I try to journal every day. I'm not as as. Uh, yeah, as, the, uh, the morning pages. Do you do do you yeah. do morning pages? Is that what you call them? Because I call I them. I call mine morning pages, and I like to do it in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, yeah, and that's the that's to me that's the best time to do it because you're waking up, you're you're at the uh, the most I guess the, the calmest you you can ever be, the most um, quite possibly focused you might be for the for the court during the course of the day. That's where you set the tone, and you're when you're sleeping, all of this stuff just kind of kind of comes through, and even in your prayers and meditation, stuff may come through as well. So taking a moment to kind of get all of that out is um I, I i love that i just am i'm as disciplined as i might be i haven't locked that discipline in yet and that is one of my goals to uh, my present goals to kind of get that in place where it's consistent no matter what i write in the mm -hmm. journal i do those pages every morning at least and write for at least five minutes upon waking up wow yeah it's so yeah. i love it i like um I'm also not download. as great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great download and I'm not as yeah. great at, at it, but something that I can also do if, if I don't catch it in the morning, right before I go to bed, I also have a ritual when I go to bed, you know, I do my mm -hmm. prayer, a little bit of stretching, a little bit of yoga, and yes. I'll grab my Bible and I'll read my chapter or my, you know, daily verse. And yeah. um, I'm trying to memorize a verse. <laughs> Psalms 91. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, so, um, memorize Psalms 91, and I'm like, what? Why can't I remember this thing? <laughs> but um, remember, it's there. It's there. <laughs> and it's there. Um, yeah. and then I also will grab my journal and just you know little notes of what happened in the day and what I want the next yeah. day to look like. You know, so yeah. yeah, it's 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 a it's like a instead of watching TV. You know, like um, mm. that's we could choose to just uh, I'll turn the TV off a little earlier, or not watch it at all, and just let's you know let me relax and spend time with myself. You know, right? Uh, that that's that's very important. That's very important. I actually um, this past weekend, um, lots of stuff has been going on around me and and, and inside as well, and I got to explain. I said, you know what? And I had heard about it um, doing this, but my mind is always going. So the idea of completely shutting everything off and not being silent and just for at least 24 hours just was like, eh. but then I had a moment where it's like, no, you need to you need to do this. And I did that this uh, this past weekend. And it was it was uh, challenging. And it was an amazing experience, and it definitely, um, it definitely allowed me to collect more, connect more with 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 my spirit, with my with my heart, with my mind, with God, with you know. Wow! Uh, yeah. Twenty-four it's hours. 
24 yeah. hours without speaking yeah i you know i had to communicate to you know i told my mom i said mom i'm not going to be available for this block of time um and i think like uh you know folks who are artists uh, they get it they we you know we get it and with how important it is to try to have that that time even if it's a, an hour to kind of just shut things down because there's so much noise around us so many distractions around us that we you it, we're human beings we, yeah we're artists but we're human beings we you know we get pulled in a lot of different directions there's a lot of noise and sometimes you need to take a moment for yourself to 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 shut that down and it's not easy it's because sir i was like I always, feel, I always felt like, oh, there's not enough time to feel like time is just like running. And it is. But I had a moment where I sat, I closed my eyes and was just meditating for, the, and that's what you do during the course, in the course of the 24 hours too. I did like, I tried to every, every half, every hour or every uh, two hours, I would do at least a half hour of breathing and meditation and just trying to just, just tune in. Mm -hmm. And I closed my eyes one time and it's the, it said the, so the make, for example, it said the clock was uh, said 12.05 and I closed my eyes and I got, and I, and I opened them again, thinking it was like, I, I say, oh, wow, what happened? I was like, it's just how much time has gone by? It feels like it was like an hour, two hours. I looked at the clock, it says 12.07, two minutes had gone by. Oh my God. And what oh that, my goodness. Yeah, and what that, that did for to me. me. I was, yeah, I was it's like, like I, what that did for me was like, I was like, uh, I wow. always see like, oh, there's not enough time. But I was like, and that in that moment, that made me realize, like, oh, wait a minute, there is enough time. It's wow. how you use the time. It is how you use the time. I wanted to uh, ask you, yeah. were you fasting in these 24 hours? Was there a fast as well? And do you fast? I Yes, I do. But no, I wasn't during this one. This was, um, I what I did do was, um, I got all the food that I need. I made sure that everything was, was vegan, R raw food. I got, uh, lettuce and fruits and vegetables and, and, um, some oat milk, water, um, some orange juice, um, and just for that time, just ate as healthy as possible. And I tried to do a walking meditation as well. I haven't quite figured that out yet because it's still distracting for me. Still distracting with me. I was like, if some people tell me, like uh, Ali Me does that, and I'm like, I need to talk to him about it. I'm like, how the heck do you do that? Because I tried that, and it's too many distractions. But also, but I think he also he listens to something, okay. and this time I couldn't listen. I wasn't listening to anything. No TV, no cell phone, no nothing. So yeah. for 24 hour, 24 hours, it was a little over 24 hours, but I had no idea what's going on in the world. And I really didn't realize how much I needed that. And I'm trying to figure out how I can incorporate that into my regimen at least every month. And to answer your question about uh, fasting, yes, I do. And I, there's a point of time that I kind of gotten away from that because I think it's so important to kind of detox and cleanse out yeah. our systems because the cleaner our you know our bodies are, are our temples the cleaner it is the easier it is to you know to, to connect and so yeah. it's as, as an artist spiritually you know it's i i can't speak too 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 much about that i and I, what i used to do uh, there's one point where i would every season change i would actually do a, a, a fast Oh, well, Where did, did um, Ankara, okay, yeah. so people may not, so Ankara, um, who I've um, interviewed here before, um, yes. he was talking about uh, fasting during the seasons and for a reason, and, and that mm -hmm. each season is a part of the an organ that you're dealing with. Um, do you know, mm -hmm. they, I'm sure he's shared that with you. He's both our mentors. Yeah, he has, and, did, um, but he's far more mm -hmm. versed in, in that than I am. I know, am. I know, I know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I definitely. Tell me more about the fasting. What is it that you, is it no food or are you doing like um lemonade fast? What kind of fast? How does it look <laughs> like? <laughs> I've, I've done that. I've done that too. But uh, mm -hmm. what the last time I, I did, a, a fast 
was actually during right before uh, the holidays. And I start and I was going to do, I actually did a, this was a little different too. I was trying something a little different and it actually, I liked it. Um, I actually did herbs and teas, um, I, at mostly raw foods, um, mostly alkaline foods as well. And I really, I, and the, what that reinforced to me is like, I need to do this, maybe not for an entire month, but for maybe a, find a week during each month where I do this. And then when it gets to the time where the season's about to change, add a week or two to that. Because I what I used to do was I would actually start a couple of, my mind would be like, okay, I'm going to do this detox. I'm going to do this cleanse. I'm going to do this fast. Why am I doing it? What's my purpose for doing it? And what am I going to do? What kind am I going to do? And I would go from cutting things out gradually to just having raw to have just doing juices yeah and juicing yeah. and water juicing um, yeah uh, in in the um when you you're saying like what's your intention do you mm. i've because I, I you know i did learn about fasting more with ankara um yeah. actually ankara is the one who taught us at um, Mind Builders Positive Youth Troupe, where we both yes. were um, in a musical theater company that toured. Um, mm -hmm. So, in so our so then I started doing, you know, getting into church, and I I used to really be one of those, you know, church ladies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not anymore. <laughs> But, um, you know, I still love God, still love my God. Yes. But yes. Um, it's just a little, I'm a little lighter about it. Uh, right. But it's, I always yeah. set a, a, like a, an intention for my, for my fasting. Um, mm -hmm. I ask, I literally write down my petition. So for my fast, I mm -hmm. always create a petition. Do you do that? Do you say, okay, I'm fasting and God, this is what I want. Okay, mm. this is the reason why you I'm know. doing this. I, I know that yeah. there are different, you know, to cleanse. Yeah. So that's a different way of fasting. But even when I know I'm cleansing, I cannot help it's it. It's attracting. It's also about attracting. Um, mm -hmm. it, whether it's attracting health, prosperity, um, you know, uh, career change, life changes, things of that nature. That's all part of it because, like, when we, you know, back at Mind Builders, um, the first person actually who I heard talk about fasting and veganism was actually Harry Poe. Harry, did we, I don't know if you remember. I did we not were, mean like, Harry, I saw Harry Poe, but he, when I entered um, Positive Youth Troop, he passed away pretty quickly. So I didn't yeah. experience him. I just saw yeah. him in the hallway. So, but let me, I know that's, I, I you know, it is it's what it it's is. It's so weird because I, I really, I feel like you were there. Uh, Harry Poe is the one who so, actually talked to you about fasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We used to do these uh, during the winter, when we were out of school, uh, uh, during the winter, the winter break, during the holidays, we would do these um, basically workshops, master classes, workshops. And, we, and but it was also... It was training, but it was also prepping, getting us ready to do the shows that we were going to do in this, like once uh, the spring came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, um, in one of these workshops, I remember <laughs> Harry was just talking about the benefits of veganism and how he felt, like when how he the differences he noticed in his body, in his energy, in his spirit and his, um, his focus. And he was just like, this, he's like, he's like, you know, and then, you know, just um, in terms of like, even doing spiritual work, he's like, you know, you know, meditation. And it's like, you will, you can feel like you are levitating and you may actually, levitate, you know, and he would go into all of these things. And I was like, wow, that sounds great. I said, but you know, I still need my, I need my, my Big Mac. I don't think I'm ready to do that. I'm not ready to do that right now. And, um, and he and Harry was talking, talking, and he's like, he's like, you know, I'm not a vegan anymore. I gotta have my fud ruckers. I'll never forget that. Like, oh, <laughs> fud wow. ruckers is a yeah, you know the huge who. Anyway, those, uh, um, yes, those um, bird, what were they? The giant, 
Fun Rock is those huge burgers. I, I remember some, yeah, New York. Um, this is New I York, guys. Yeah. We're from we're from You're New from York New City, Bronx and Queens representing. Yeah. Yes, I represent did. Harlem as well. Yeah. <laughs> but really, we, if you if you're from New York, you quite possibly at some point in time you live in just every borough. All the boroughs. Thought I was from the everyone thought I was from the Bronx for a long time. I was like, no, you I'm, you I'm, were there every day. Pretty much, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Making that commute. But um, right. but yeah, that was the uh Harry mentioned that. But Ankara had been vegan for years and years and years at that point. But he wasn't pushing us. He just kind of wanted us to kind of come to it on our own. And then when Harry passed, that was the point where I it was a pivotal point for me because I was, you know, you know, graduating and looking at what it was I wanted to do with my life and looking at my spirituality and looking at my health and looking at all these things. And when Harry passed, it kind of, it kind of clicked the light for me. And it was just, it was like, you know what? The cleaner my body, the cleaner my, cleaner my body, the easier it is for me to access whatever I need to, to become this person to whether it's Malcolm X or whoever, it might be um, the easier it is to access these pockets, these things that, that we that our body naturally holds on to. You know, that's why when you get a massage, sometimes you might somebody they, they hit a point and you might break down and cry. They hit another point, you get pissed off because your body is storing all of this stuff. And, yeah. And, yeah. And so I and that's when I started cutting out things and I actually, you know, had conversations with Ankara um, and started my process of becoming a vegan. I remember, I remember us mm -hmm. um, talking in, remember you used to buy the vegan roadies? Yeah, um, from um, a, a, a yeah. restaurant, a, a little restaurant near, the, in the Bronx. Yeah. And um, I remember having a conversation with you, we were walking together and you were, and I'm like, how can you be a vegan, no meat? <laughs> No chicken. <laughs> so that to me, you guys were like really opening up my mind. That 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 place was such a, um, you know, the, my church. You know, it's like I learned so much, uh, yeah, yeah. On, and who I who we are is yeah. because of places like that. Um, oh, I wanted to. Um, I know that you have a you know a few minutes and. You, you know, you have to go yeah. soon, but I, before we leave and thank you for all those great nuggets. And, um, I hope okay. whoever okay. listens to it can see like, this is fasting. What, you know, waking up in the morning, writing in a journal. I'm a man, men don't write in no journals. That's the girly we thing. Need you know? to. That's, we need to, that's actually, we, we should, I think it, I, it, yeah. it's a great therapy. Um, it's a, a, yeah. a great place to just get rid of your stuff or to know yourself actually you get to yes. study yourself in journaling yeah yeah and see Tell how much that. you follow how much you've grown and how much you um you know the things you experience because like I'll, I'll be honest like sometimes i don't like think about the things that i've done and think all the things i've experienced they're just there but if you ever get a chance to kind of look back flip back a couple of pages and mm -hmm. or look back in another journal you can say wow that's where i start that's where i came from i'm not i'm the same person but i'm not exactly that yes. person anymore because you i get grow. to see yeah you grow you see your evolution and yeah. like and yes. you have a document is documented you know yeah. me too i'm like oh my goodness <laughs> am i gonna let my baby read this <laughs> Well, <laughs> no. At I'm, the point, I'm, the time where it doesn't, they, the, the, you know, all, you know, all the, uh, those, all the uh, innocent and guilty are, are, <laughs> are no longer. It's like you can read this, then you cannot read this any time before that. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> there's a great guy that I follow. I listen to um, Jim Rohn. Do you know about who that is? Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn. was Tony Moore, uh, Tony Robbins mentor. Oh, Jim Rohn. Hmm. so everybody knows Tony Robbins, but um, like, I don't know if a lot of people know Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn is amazing. You need to listen to him. And um, he talks about journaling and he talks about how 
you know, this is where I realize where I grow. It's a way for me to leave information to my family. Um, my children will learn the lessons that I've learned. Like if I, I take it to church, I, you know, if there's a scripture, I write it down like, and I go into the details and I feel like this is a great book for my family to get to know me better, but also to leave lessons for them. Um, I like in my journals, I have my, my goals. I see the goals that I wrote at the beginning of the year and I see everything that I accomplished. So it's like, it's such a great, it's, it's, it's not a girly thing, you know, for no. any man out there who thinks that's a girly thing. Um, but it's, it's just, it's, it is a disciplinary thing. It definitely, you definitely need discipline to sit down and write. Yes. It's, that's yes. the hard part. Yeah. Before we leave, um, you know what? I haven't told people who, if, you know, if they don't recognize you, um, if you see um, a Rita Franklin movie with um, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer You're special, Ray. You have a talent they call genius. You Think about what you're trying to do to me. How old is she? She's 10, but her voice is going on 30, honey. How many albums have you had? Four. And no hits. You're not about to mess this up for me. Jennifer yeah. Hudson Star. She won the NAACP Award. <laughs> she did. She won. I yeah, she did. She awesome. got so snub. She should have gotten nominated. She really should have gotten nominated. She didn't wow. get nominated for the Oscars. And that, you know, hey, it's whatever. Because you don't do she, that. You don't she do really the work won for an that. Oscar. <laughs> well, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, but no, yes. But I think that as a, as an artist, like and what I what I experienced from her and with her in the in that in that in the the process with respect it was the work that she did and where she had to go vocally we know she 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 could do anything vocally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but as an artist as an actor where she had to go was completely that was not her at all and I so appreciated her um, her dedication and her commitment and her focus to do that because you know you can get swept up in all the stuff you know and wrapped up in that and forget about the craft and the work and the and the and the the time that it takes to 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 create and build not a character but a living breathing human being that you when you look you say wow you know who exactly that is you know that person whether wow. it's a historical person or not. But she went, I think that is like, that was like the, the best work that she's done in, thus far. And I think that she's got so much more she's going, she's going to do. She's going to get an opportunity to do. Tell me about you, though. Um, your mm -hmm. experience working um, in, in, this, in this movie. And um, how was it? You played Martin Luther King before on stage. So yes, was it yeah. easy? Like it, it was like, it just, no. just the universe prepared no. you. It wasn't it's, easy. It wasn't easy. Uh, anytime, I'll say it like this. Anytime you have to, uh, you get an opportunity to play someone who's kind of, who's been canonized in the way he has, and it's kind of an icon um, in the movement, um, in the world. Um, there's a le there's like um, a certain level of um, I'll put this there's an expectation that you do it a certain way and what I mean by that is you know do the voice you do the voice and there are people who can probably you know probably much better than I could ever dream of doing it doing a, doing the caricature or doing the voice of Martin and I didn't start 
with the voice. That's one of the things like when I was when I was doing a, I did a tour of Mountaintop a couple of years ago um, and I had an opportunity. I actually did. I, yeah, I realized and when I think about it, it's like, oh, I actually played Martin a few times. So in, information wise, mm -hmm. it was helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But every single time I had an opportunity to do it, I learned something new about Martin. I learned something new about myself. And so every single time there I got an opportunity to do it, there's something different about. Like one of the things that I got, uh, I, I um, responses that I got in some of the, um, the the press stuff that I was doing when the movie was at the at the premiere was like we hadn't seen we hadn't had an opportunity to see Martin like this. The relationship that he had with with Aretha and you know he you know his playfulness with her and and I was like. I was like, well, I was like, I'm glad that came across because she saw him as uncle. And, and, and then the funny thing is that people, even though he was older than her, he wasn't that much older than her. We think that Martin was like in his 40s or 50s when he was assassinated. He was 36. Yeah, he was 36. And he did all these things, all of these things before he hit his, by the time he hit his 30s, he had, he was known around the world. Yes. You know? I remember he started so, when he was 27. He was very young in his 20s. Yeah. When he just started like preaching and going out and just well, started, started, well, he started the world. Well, he started hmm? before that. But he started becoming more known when he got pushed to the front during the um, the summer um, boycott. Yeah. During that boycott. But, um, but yeah, to, to answer your question, um, it was not, it wasn't easy because of the, also the, 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 the scope of the project as well. Um, the, the blessing in that, and, and outside of the, the, the job and the opportunity to, to work with all these great people was that the director, Liesl, and the writer, they're theater people. Awesome. Gracie, oh, that's you Gracie. were in your L oh wow. God is and, I love it. I love it. Cause I see that God is just putting you in the right place with the right people yeah. and you could understand the language. You guys can yeah. you guys know how the lingo, which yeah. is different. Theater and filmmaking. Very, it's yeah. in at the heart of it, it's not that different in the execution mm -hmm. of it. It can't, it, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of what I mean in the heart of it, it's like, you still gotta, as an artist, you still gotta have your intention. You still gotta know who you are. You still gotta know the story. You still need to know your art. You need to understand what's the obstacle. What's the conflict? What am I doing here? Why am I saying this? You still gotta understand all that, just like in theater, but it's just like, you know, uh, the example I like to use is the same, to saying they're very sharp, razor sharp, but acting on stage is using a broadsword and acting on film and television is using a scalpel because you don't have, you can just be natural. You don't have to do too much unless the role calls for it to be that broad. Um, you don't have to do too much as long as it's going on inside. The camera's gonna crap, it's gonna pick it up. The grandma's gonna grab it. And so with, with Liesl, the that blessing of having a director who started in theater, knows the theater, loves the theater, and could can speak to the artist in a way, and sometimes in a nonverbal way, because she did it twice. She did it. She did that for me like twice. That I you know I was freaking out on the first day, uh, and first speech was a monologue that I didn't realize. I didn't find out that it was different. What I learned was different from what was going to be done that day. There was a rewrite, and I found that out with the uh, with the dialect coach. We were he just wanted to check up on me and see how I was doing, and he said he just wanted to hear it. And he was like, ah, I don't know that that may not be. Um, Tom was like, Yeah, that's not. I don't think that's the right one. He said, Let me double check. Check no. So I had to sit with the script and relearn it, and wow. right before I had to go out, and so. We go out and I'm doing it and I'm having and I'm actually going back to the old script and just like all of this stuff is going I'm going through all of this stuff and I walk off the stage that's the first one because I'm because I'm like 
the first time I go up there, I got to, eh, I got to go. And Lisa came up to me and said, and walked past me. And then she came back and said, you all right? I was like, yeah. She's like, are you stressing out? I was like, yeah. She said, I was like, she said, look, I, you know, your audition, I saw everything that I needed to see. You, he said, I, he said, you came, she said uh, that you came in at, it's like, I, 150% of what I was expecting. So I'm happy with what's going on. You need to let that go. <laughs> so you need to let that go and just trust and just, it's like, and I'm, and then she was gone. I was like, cool, thank you. Got it. And then um, that was good from there. And then um, there was a, before uh, the, there was a, on the, my last day of shooting, uh, we were, uh, it was the, church scene where they introduce Martin um, connected with CL. And when when Aretha becomes, goes from young Aretha to uh, uh, teenage Aretha. And the, the she called me down to the uh, video village. And I was like, I was like I'm trying, I'm like in my, I was like, I don't really want to do, I was like, okay, you know what? Get out of that, go down there and see what the queen wants. So I went down there and Liesl is not, a, she's not tiny. She's like, she's like, gotta be like six, two. She's, oh she's, she's all, but, she, but she's all heart. She's all heart. Mm -hmm. She just smiles all the time. Um, and then got down there and I was like, yeah, she said, hey, she's like, I was like, I was like, she's like, what are you doing down there? I was like, they said you want to meet it. See? And because she got a million things going on. She don't remember. She's mm -hmm. like, she's like, I, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember. And I, and I walk out. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back and do my work. So I walked out, was heading back, and I got to the door, and I, radio came in, so, and somebody PA got at me and said, "Hey, uh, Lisa, why don't you come back to Video Village?" I was like, "Okay, I'll come back." I came back, and she said, "Now I remember. Stand here, and I want you to watch this." And it was uh, the the young lady that was playing young Aretha singing, ah, beautiful voice. And I just watched her just, and, and it did exactly, I didn't know I needed that until that very moment. But she, know, she knew that I needed that to connect the dot between how long we've actually known each other, the connection that we have, and music, you know me, I, me, I love music, and music yeah. just like speaks, it speaks to me. I don't know how she knew that in that moment, but she did. And it just like dropped me in. And I just like, I like, like collapsed on her. And, <laughs> and I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's exactly what I needed. And she's like, and she just looked at me and she said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then mm -hmm. went out there and there was something, that, you know, they can't put everything in it, but there were, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> there was, um, we were having church in, yes. in there. I and could only, oh my goodness, I, oh, I, I, I it's started, like I love yeah, yeah. hearing this. I could she, feel it through what you're, through your storytelling, yeah. having church. She had a, <laughs> yeah, she had, um, she actually let the camera roll a little longer. And mm -hmm. while it was rolling, I actually kept going beyond the script. I would say things that Martin actually said, I because I remember some of it. So mm -hmm. I would actually like add things to the end just to kind of because i was there and the the energy was there he was there and it was just like mm. and oh my goodness. i i gotta say that that you know that experience um was quite possibly one if not the one of the best experiences i've had to date on working on a project where i actually had an opportunity to kind of really just just kind of just really kind of immerse myself in that world in that person and not just do a car a cutout of this person really breathe life into it and I'm that hoping, is, hopefully that's what what is what we see in the film yeah I've only seen it once I haven't seen I can't I, I, it's hard for me to watch to watch but the film itself I, I thoroughly enjoyed really wow that's something that's really interesting that you only seen it once yeah. I can't, um, this is, um, I know you're a perfectionist, so I could only imagine 
what you were going through. Um, in in the um, I think that we're good there. Actually, um, I just wanted to you know I know you said it's eight twelve, and I know you said to eight o'clock. So uh, thank you for this extra time. Uh, Woo! No, 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 no problem, no problem. If look, if we if we need to do this again, if there's other stuff that you wanted to kind of dive into, since we've already done this, we don't have to do okay. this part. You just do um, the other stuff. I'm yeah, totally yeah. open to that. Oh, that thank out. you, thank you so much, Gilbert. Yeah, I think I I I, will, I think you have so much information that um it will be great to, to let people yeah i would love to have you on my show again love awaken and prosper yeah. and i wanted to talk about you know you know the evolution because i know you had your one man show the evolution of a man and mm -hmm. um and then just you know you're like it's, it takes it's perseverance it's perseverance and i'm so very happy for you that you are doing so great i love I've thank always you. loved watching you, period. You just, oh, thank you. you are good to look at. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm looking at you I'm like, my boy look good. This is my brother. <laughs> so as my brother, so yeah, yeah. I'm like, but I, I, could, I could definitely say my brother looks so handsome. And, um, thank you. and, and, you, you're you, so and you look beautiful too, sis. I, I love you. And <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so yeah, I wanted to go. Let, next one, we will come. We're, we're come um, is you know, uh, I wanted to let people know about life. You know, when life happens, and how do you continue? Uh, that will be part two. How do you continue when life happens to yeah. push on to yeah yeah to push on for your work and, and still um, chase your dreams and still go out there. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for watching this part one. Um, and definitely, you know, stay tuned for part two with Gilbert Glenn Brown, actor, singer, and everything else. In, Renaissance in, man. All right, I'll rock with that. Ooh, okay, the Renaissance man. Yeah, thank you. I love you so much, um, Gilbert. Any love last you. words that you want to say? Anything you want to share to inspire young actors or people who are still um, at in the game trying to get, you know, that 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 gig get to get that character where you know can nobody tell me nothing now <laughs> you know or, you know I, not I'm even a, like in that way but it's like no, this is really fulfilling like like what you just yeah. said mm -hmm. i guess i would I, the, the first thing that popped into my head uh is don't run from the work don't run from the work wow. and let, and that covers a lot of I areas get it. That means I get that. your internal work, your personal work, the work as an artist, the work as a human being. Um, don't run from it because it's got to be done. It's got the work has got to get done. And if you don't want to do it, move out the way and let the other person do it. Who really wants to do it? You got to be a grown up. You got to be, yeah. you know, grown, grown to do this kind yeah. of work. It takes it's yeah. a big responsibility to you know you can't play you can't play it's show business you know so exactly there we go <laughs> exactly right all right my love thank you everyone for watching love awaken and prosper this is part one with Gil gilbert glenn, glenn brown please like subscribe and share and comment let us know what kind of questions should i ask for part two um oh. let me know oh. you know put it out there i'm putting it out there and and just surprise us and thank you again gilbert um, oh, you're for your right. time everyone god bless you and i love you bye bye